Okay, let's go ahead and verify the identity. So what does this even mean? Well, I'm gonna explain this problem in just one second, but you can see here, I'm, uh, I kind of wrote out pre-calculus. Now, why did I write this out? Well, this would be a typical type of problem that you would find in a pre-calculus course. Now, for some of you out there that happen to be taking a trigonometry course, well, this would be a problem in that course, but it's far more common these days to uh, be taking your full trigonometry uh, study or your course within a pre-calculus course. Matter of fact, trigonometry probably makes up a good one-third um, to even one half of most pre-calculus courses, mostly like maybe like at least one third of that course will be trigonometry or advanced level trigonometry, far more than what you would learn uh, in a basic, let's say high school level uh, geometry class where you're studying basic sine and cosine and tangent, all that kind of good stuff. Those, um, those concepts, basic trigonometry is generally introduced and geometries. But what we're talking about here is a more advanced level trigonometry. But uh, what does this problem um, mean? Okay, verify the identity. Well, an identity is basically a kind of statement that's saying that this side is uh, equal to this side. Okay, we're making that statement. If we're saying that this is equal to this, this is an identity. So something like a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Of course, we know this as the Pythagorean theorem, but we're making this statement that this side is equal to this side. Well, we can prove this theorem. Okay, there's different ways we can prove this or verify this, and this is the idea here. We need to verify uh, this identity or be able to do this. Okay, this is a very important part of trigonometry and what you need to do in a pre-calculus course. So how do you do that? Well, I'm gonna talk about the various techniques uh, generally speaking, because there is a lot to know when you verify uh, trigonometric identities. Now, I'm not going to show you the answer here because there's not one way to verify the, this identity. Okay, If you're at this uh, level of uh, math, though, you should go ahead and pause the video and see if you can you know, verify this. I would think this is, well, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not that difficult of a problem when it comes to trigonometric identity. So if you can't do this problem, well, then you need some, uh, you know, good uh, assistance uh, with this level of math. I'll talk about um, how, uh, you know, I can help you out further with trigonometric identities. But before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help all people learn mathematics. And I say people, not just students, because there's a lot of people out there that are learning math that are not necessarily students. So uh, I'm telling you right now, though, all of you can be successful, uh, but it requires three things. One, you got to be willing to work hard, okay, especially at this level of math. If you don't put in the work, you're not going to learn this. It's just too much going on. So if you're looking for shortcuts or easy way out, stop looking. They don't exist. So that's the first thing. You got to work hard. Second thing is you need some encouragement, okay? Please don't give up, especially if you're like in a pre-calculus course. This is a difficult, difficult course, and trigonometric identities are... Uh, challenging. So if you're struggling with this, you're like, oh, this is driving me crazy. I'm not going to be able to understand this. Listen, I totally get that, but I'm, I'm giving you some encouragement. Don't quit. There is a path forward. And here is what the, here is the kind of like the secret to really being successful math. Okay. You need to learn from someone or something that you actually understand from, uh, what's going on. Okay. There's nothing worse than being in a classroom or trying to read something or learn from something and you're totally confused. That's how frustration starts. See, math is a very technical subject and it can be taught in a very technical way, sometimes an overly technical way. The way I like to teach math is I like to explain things in the easy to uh, understand uh, manner so all students can get what's going on without watering down uh, what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for um, that has advanced math on it, there's a lot of them out there like the GRE, GMAT, maybe a teacher certification exam. Uh, you could certainly have these type of problems on there. Or if you're homeschooling mathematics, maybe at this level and um, algebra two or say pre-calculus, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Check those out if you need some notes, but you need to be taking awesome math notes, especially 
at this level of math. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's just get right into this problem uh, here because there is a lot to know. If you're at this level of mathematics, you need to already be super strong at algebra. But here's the main idea. So when we're trying to verify a trigonometric identity, what we're trying to do is to take one side of the identity and make it look like the other, okay? And typically, you take the more complicated side and you're gonna uh, kind of work on that one side. It could be the left side or the right side. Just and, and I'm speaking in generalities here because there's different techniques and different ways you can approach things. But typically, it will be like the left-hand side of your identity. What well, could be the right-hand side? The more uh, complicated side, you're gonna take that side and then you're going to try to make it look like the simpler side. So I'm speaking in general terms here because there's terms because there's always uh, you know exceptions to these uh, kind of general rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side, okay, this tangent x plus cotangent x, and I'm going to make it look like this side. So I'm going to be I'm going to be working on the left hand side. I'm going to be doing all different sorts of things here, and uh, I'm going to my goal is is I'm going to keep working, 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 working here until eventually. I get this down to look like this, which is secant x times cosecant x. Now, what do you need to do in order to, uh, to uh, verify trigonometric identities? Well, you need to have, um, uh, first of all, you need to have strong algebra skills. That's number one. Number two, uh, you need to have excellent notes, detailed notes on all the fundamental identities that you already learned. Okay? So if you don't have those uh, notes, you need to get... Uh, those notes available to you. So if you um, want my notes to this, you're not going to find them in the links that I provided. Well, you, you well, I take that back. You'll, I do have some notes on trigonometry, but I'm going to really strongly suggest that you check out my pre-calculus course. Just go to my math help program and under the middle and high school section, you'll see pre-calculus. Uh, you'll be blown away with how much information I have in that course. So if you're doing trigonom uh, trigonometric uh, identities or anything pre-calculus, you'll have a ton of assistance uh, in there. But anyways, you need a good set of notes with all the foundational uh, trigonometric identities um, like uh, sine tangent is equal uh, equal to sine over cosine, basic stuff that hopefully you already know. Okay, so don't try to re remember those things. Have, in other words, be looking at your notes. Okay, don't be like, oh yeah, I think I remember this. I think I remember that. Have a good, fresh set of notes or some sort of reference next to you. You know, as you uh, do these prompts. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going here. So I'm going to work on the left-hand side, as I indicated. So I have tangent x plus cotangent x. My whole mission is to work on this, and eventually we'll make it look like this. So when you're dealing with tangent or cotangent, one of the best techniques you can do when you're dealing with trigonometric identities is to turn everything into sine and cosine. Okay, You don't have to always do that, but that is a great method. It can, uh, it's a good starting point. So if you don't know what else to do, guess what? Just turn everything into sine or cosine. So tangent, you can write as sine x over cosine x, or tangent x, you can write as sine x over cosine x. And then cotangent is just the reciprocal, right, of a tangent. So that's cosine x over sine x. Now, if you don't understand this right here, well, then you're in dire need of improvement with this stuff, okay? So just know, understand where your starting point's at. Uh, and if you're like, okay, no, I get this, Mr. YouTube Math Man, continue on. Okay, perfect. All right, so again, working with sines and cosines is an excellent method, an excellent uh, technique when you're dealing with trigonometric identities. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on here. And I have sine x um, over cosine x plus cosine x over sine x, right? I just wrote tangent and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine. Now I need to add these, okay? So again, we're talking about basic algebra. How, do, how can I do that? Well, you can just do it this way using this bow tie method. Uh, if you're not familiar with the bow tie method, check out some of my videos on fractions. But basically, whether you figure out what the LCD is, you need to understand that when we add these up, you get a sine squared uh, x plus cosine squared x over cosine x uh, times sin, uh, sine x, okay? But here's a nice shortcut, okay? When you're doing these problems, uh, you can go sine x times sine x, that's sine squared x, plus cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared x, and then our, numer our denominator will be cosine x times sine x, okay? So if you've never seen this technique of adding or subtracting fraction, it is a godsend. You absolutely need to know that. Let's just see how it works uh, with some basic numbers. One-third plus two-fifths. Of course, we can 
find the LCD, but guess what? If I go like this, you start with this denominator, five times one is five, plus three times two is six, over three times five is 15. Guess what? Uh, that's 11 fifteenths. Okay, you need to know this method because it comes in super handy in more advanced math like this, okay? But either way, if you're like struggling get from get, getting from here to here, you need to improve your algebra skills. So figure out what you don't know because that, um, if there might be, you might be just one skill away from doing really well with this topic, okay? With trigonometric identities, okay? All right, so let's move on. So I have sine squared, uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x over cosine uh, x times sine x. All right, so next you need to be very familiar with these fundamental identities. And we have an identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. This identity is uh, widely, widely used in verification or verifying trigonometric identities. Again, just really basic stuff. Same thing like tangent uh, is equal to sine over cosine. These are the fundamental identities. There's a whole bunch of them. You need to know these. And, uh, you know, eventually when you do a lot of problems, you'll kind of just remember these. But again, don't try to use your rote uh, memory. Don't just like, oh, you know, try to recall them in your brain. Have your notes, have something to reference so you can look at, you know, these identities uh, so you can make the leap. You're like, oh, sine squared, uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Okay, because that's what that's equal to. So let's flip, let's change this thing and uh, have that equal to one. All right, that's going to be really um, a super important step in order to uh, verify this identity. Okay, so sine squared x plus cosine squared x. We're going to switch that out to a one over cosine x times sine x. Now, again, you need to uh, be really good at algebra. So here I can split the this fraction into two fractions. If I told you to multiply these two fractions here, one over cosine x times one over sine x, this would be the answer, okay? So a good technique is to break up this one fraction into two separate fractions with cosine and sine independently, because now we can see one over cosine x is what? Well, by definition, one over cosine x is secant, and one over sine x is cosecant. So now I have secant times cosecant, and there you go. That happened to be the right-hand side of this identity, okay? So remember, we just uh, started over here on the left, and we finally uh, got to this point, and we have verified this trigonometric identity. Now, there's different approaches you could, you could have taken to uh, uh, verify this. That's why I didn't put down one answer as, hey, this is a, you know the correct answer. There is no correct answer. There are only correct uh, steps. So this is a really, really important topic uh, that you're going to see within pre-calculus. And it's a typical area where a lot of students, um, you know, they can kind of do the easier problems when they struggle with the more advanced problems. So if you need help with trigonometric identities or pre-calculus at this level of mathematics, definitely check out my pre-calculus course. It will help you tremendously. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.